Hello everybody and welcome to this quick video. We are here in Godalming, 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 Godalming in Surrey. Uh, think of it like Guildford but up a little bit. Um, and we're joined here by Gareth of XC Detailing. And you're here to tweak a little car. You're actually from Devon. The amount of paperwork we had to fill in to get you all the way over here was, was yeah. stunning. <laughs> um, and uh, we are here to look after a rather nice car. So you've got clients, quite a few in Surrey, bizarrely. Yeah, I've got a handful of clients in Surrey um, and I pay a visit once every quarter to them. Mm -hmm. um, kind of on tour. Yeah, on tour. Um, to do maintenance cleans or protect any new vehicles they might have bought or paint corrections on second hand vehicles they might have bought. Or mm -hmm that need work doing on them. Um, and today we've had a rather sexy and slightly unconventional I'd like to say yeah. G-Wagon Mercedes proper G-Wagon not the new yeah. one um, and it's a G63 it's a G63 um, it's a short wheelbase and it's a soft top and it's a, the Brabus tuned version so it's got all the Brabus body kit and wheels and exhaust and it sounds gorgeous. It looks kind of cool. It looks slightly odd in proportion, but yeah. when you get close to it and spend a bit of time like we have this morning, um, it is a car that just makes it all quiver. And when it's fired up, blimey Moses, that thing makes some lovely noises. Two yeah. pipes either side. Um, and the whole car rocks when you, when you, when you accelerate as well. Yeah, <laughs> when you're blipping the well. throttle, it's like this, <laughs> which is kind of proper like a muscle car. But um, that car has got uh, black paint and it's been owned by the current owners for what, eight, nine years, you're saying? Yeah, eight or nine years, I think. Um, yeah, they've had it for eight or nine years. They brought it locally from a dealership um, and it's been used as a daily car. So it's mm. not been, it's not a show pony or anything like that. It's not taken to shows and, you know, had, that it's not monocoddled. Yeah, it, it lives yeah. in a garage, to it, be fair. It does live in a garage, but it gets used every day and it goes to the shops and it goes yeah. to yoga classes and <laughs> carries dogs. And Mercedes does yoga, it's, it's to do with axle <laughs> articulation. The, um, and so today, what's happened is basically that car, even though it's a left hooker, the value of it has shot up because they're super rare. They're only making, you say, six a year for I a period? I think Mercedes only made, I might be wrong, eight, eight soft top, short wheel bases a year um, wow. of, of that shape. Um, so the fact that it's a Brabus one mm. as well probably means again I'm not I don't yeah, don't on this. <laughs> it's likely to be the only one built that year that's yeah. a Brabus so um, as a result the value's gone up and so the owners are thinking well maybe it's time to trade to a different vehicle yeah you know um, so your mission here was to come over and you've already been looking after the car it's already had work from yourself so you know it's in pretty good yeah name. the car's been on my books for well since the owners bought it so seven or eight seven or eight years ago yeah um, so yeah, I, I know the car inside and out. <laughs> and it's a 2007, I think it's private plated, but it's a yeah. 207. Yes, 2007. Car. So it's already 12 years old, but it's looking really good. There, yeah. are, there are marks of um, what look like just sort of general parking related and daily yeah. driving related stuff, which we've been attending to. Yeah. Um, and today what we've been doing is spot repair, putting in essentially touch-ins, uh, wet sanding back, and then polishing over the top, so little scratches left by dogs and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, a few like little scratches left by dogs and people walking past in car parks with bags and things like that, um, just to sort of make it a lot more presentable for sale. Obviously, it is used as a daily car; it's not a show pony, so we're not going for not perfection. Going bonkers, yeah. yeah, we're just going for presentable and, and tidy, clean-looking, yeah. honest vehicle. So we'll be doing an article in the next magazine which will be about those sort of small spot repairs. So these are scratches that you need to put some paint into. They can't just necessarily be polished out, but that whole process, uh, and it worked really well. Uh, I was really impressed with the, the effect that it was having and the, the overall impression. Bear in mind the car had quite a lot of um, uh, orange peel already. So the danger is when you start sanding it, you end up with different sort of textures of orange peel that don't match. Yeah. Um, and that can stand out, but you managed to avoid doing that, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to go and do a shoot. Apparently there's a local park or something. We're going to go and do a shoot so we can create the owners a nice little portfolio for their car. But I want to know about you, Gareth. I want to know about how did you get into valeting and detailing and when? Well, I started working for myself in valeting about 2010. But I suppose before that, I always had a love for cars mm -hmm. since before I can even remember. Um, but I worked for a local Seat dealership when mm -hmm. I was 20. Um, I started doing valeting for them. I stayed with them for a year or so and left and went and worked for a local private company mm -hmm. who had contracts with all the main dealers locally, so Volkswagen, Skoda. So you're very much cutting your teeth on the trade and, line of yeah. things. Yeah. So I, I learned on the trade line of things. However, the guy that I learned from was very, although we had strict time 
schedules and stuff to, to stick to. He, was, he knew his stuff yeah. and he didn't cut corners at the moment. So unlike some of the horror stories you hear from dealers they these can days. be done right, particularly yeah. if you're trying to sell the car yeah. and it's a yeah. small, I'm guessing it was a small private rather than a big chain. Yeah, yeah it was a small private firm, so um, yeah, it was a bit different to, to the, the kind of yeah, yeah, impression. Bash them out quick yeah. types. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then you went and got a proper job briefly. Yeah, I um, went and worked for local government for Somerset County Council for five years and trade trade to be an accountant. Oh crikey, yeah. so that was exciting. Yeah, um, well not really. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> Ooh, I do like but, a good spreadsheet. Yeah. XLS or XLSX? XLS and, um, and yeah, lot, lots of macro writing. And mm, good macro. Anyway, before you get me too aroused, <laughs> um, moving back on, 2010 or so you kind of reappeared back on the scene. 2010 I decided I had enough of the council, sort of wanted to work for myself. Still, I'd still been valuing and detailing cars in my holidays and periods in between working at the council and um, yeah, decided to set up, set up on my own basically and Exceed was born. Yes, and I remember, so it was initially Exceed valeting and detailing? Was it, it was initially just Exceed valeting um, and then due to how the environment yeah, the and the world's changed, yeah. <laughs> we thought, uh, yeah, I changed it to Exceed detailing and valeting just to get the right kind of clientele and so you're based in Taunton, you've got a unit there, you still offer mobile service, you do the occasional tour to Surrey. Yeah. Um, is the unit in Taunton? The unit is in Taunton, yeah, it's right by, right by Junction 25 on the motorway, so really, okay. really convenient. That would be the M5, I'm yeah. guessing, yeah. <laughs> being Devon. Yeah. Um, and um, so I want to know, what has been, over the years, your favourite car to detail? What's the detail you look back on and you think, God, I really enjoyed that? Strangely, not one of the most, not one of the flashiest or fanciest exactly. cars, yeah. but um, uh, Last year I worked on a Maserati 4200 GT in okay. bright red. Yeah. Um, hugely satisfying <laughs> job when it came out. And that was yeah. was that full correction work? You were yeah, doing, it, was a, it was a full correction and coating. Yeah, and it, I wasn't limited on time or anything like that, which you quite often are. So yeah. How how long did you spend on it? Yeah. It had probably 40, 45 hours put into the, into the paint in the end. Um, some bits were wet sanded back and before yeah. having um, been polished up um, didn't have many chips touched in because the front end front bumper the nose cone had been painted previously oh, anyway so that was already fairly tidy but yeah really nice car to work on really and nice paint the shapes is lovely as yeah. well because yeah. yeah. you had the 3200 which was the smaller turbo engine yeah. and the 4.3 was a was a bigger V8, bigger it? V8. Yeah. well even even the 3.2 was a V8 it was just a yeah, smaller yeah, it was a 3.2 yeah. V8 yeah. Um, and that was turbo too. Yes. So anyway, before we get into Maserati trivia, what's been your biggest challenge to detail? Biggest challenge to detail? It's got to be a Land Rover or a Defender. Okay. There, just because there's so many nooks and crannies and corners and stuff. Yeah. Lots of angles, aluminium bodies, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and those do you get? I suppose in Devon, nobody drives a Land Rover or a Tractor, don't they? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not far wrong. <laughs> So there's plenty of those to do. Um, so product-wise, uh, for from the point of view of the chemical product, what chemical product at the moment is really pressing your buttons? What are you really enjoying using? Um, I've, I'm always looking to try new stuff. So yep. um, I've recently tried a bit of Lab Cosmetica, the yep. leather cleaner and stuff. I've been quite impressed with that. Yeah, Lab Cosmetica. So it's an Italian brand. It's made by Mafra. Um, the, currently, it looks like we might be going down to Italy, in fact, to go and have a little factory tour and stuff this month. So. Um, their new thing, and that's brought in by John Hall at Clean and Shiny. Yeah. Um, and any other products? So suddenly, um, I've recently started using some Fenlab ceramics as yep. well. Um, I've been quite impressed with, with the quality of those ceramics. Um, Every we talk to everybody we talked yeah. about Fenlab, who's used it, yeah. absolutely adores the yeah. stuff. Um, Koch Chemi compounds, yep. one of my favourite. Today you're using H9, yeah. so that's yeah. a kind of a newer one because they brought out the. Yeah, it's the a newer, old. slightly heavier cap, yeah, a bit more. Bit more slightly, less, yeah, yeah, I mean, slightly less dusty than an H8, I think. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and machine-wise, what was interesting is uh, normally with DAs, you'll find that for majority of sort of enhancement works, you know, you might do your, your heavy correction with a rotary, you might do enhancement element to get rid of your um, holograms and marks with a DA, and then you go back to rotary for dueling. Uh, but a lot of people, on the whole, their go-to uh, DA in the professional market is going to be the um, Rupes 15, Rupes. Uh, yeah. X uh, 15 and then the uh, Flex XFEs, but you're using a 21. Yeah. And it was fascinating. I was watching you doing, and bear in mind the 21, it's got a bigger orbit, so it's ideal for doing things like panel bands and bigger flat yeah. areas. 
um, most people would use a smaller throw for the more intricate areas that we have in Mercedes, but I saw you wielding that 21, yeah. it's quite some skill I have to say, um, and, and being able to do it. Do you find the 21 is your go-to? I do, yeah, I, I use the 21 for most of my stuff, because it's got a longer throw, it works at correcting a little bit quicker and easier than a 15, um, but I do run a smaller backing plate on it, so I, yes. rather than a bigger, big six and a half inch, or whatever yeah. it's backing plate, I run a five inch, five inch. one, you know, five inch backing plate, and that makes so much more difference in being able to control it and get it into places. Okay. And so I saw you using wool pad, were you today? Yeah, I was using a wool pad, um, a Roops course wool pad. Um, Have you tried their new ones, or is that was that one of their new ones? I think it was one of their new ones, yeah. Um, certainly, there's lots to talk about that. And then you had a yellow foam pad as well, I saw. I did. Yeah, green and a yellow foam pad again, both roots. I kind of went through a spell of using chemical guys, mm -hmm. Hexlogic pads, and still do quite like them, but I've mm -hmm. become, yeah, yeah. sort of become attached to the roots ones recently. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good, and that's the other thing, is that, you know, with technology constantly changing, obviously the root pairs, worlds are fairly new. Yeah. Um, it's about embracing that, trying it out, and if it works for you, adopting yeah. it. and everything works. Different things work on different cars as well, so, um, I mean, unfortunately, but a lot of the cars that I work on are German, so <laughs> they're generally quite hard and the same sort of, same kind of deal you're getting with German cars, generally across the board. A bit of effort there, certainly. Um, what is your dream car to detail, as in, not one you've done yet, but if somebody's phoned you up and said, I've got a, for me it would be obviously Subaru, anything, um, but they call you up and say, I've got X, Y, and Z, what would that X, Y, and Z be? I'd love to do an F40. An F40 Ferrari. Yeah, I'd love to do an F40. Which is fascinating. A lot of de detailers are nervous. I mean, I know quite a few have done F40s, and they're like, a lot of them are, I wouldn't say they're nervous. They're, once you've done them, I think they're happier. But you can, the, the paint is so thin, you can see the carbon yeah. fibre weave through them. So from a detailing point of view, there's an element of fear because of that. A, also it's a Ferrari, and it's worth an awful lot of money. Um, and I'm, I mean, I like the F40 because it was on my bedroom wall when I was a kid, uh, although I was always more of a 959 guy. Which yeah, I must admit, I did like the 959 yeah. when I was a kid, really. Not <laughs> interested in the Lambos, it was always the 959 and then the F40, maybe. But what, what is it that draws you to the F40? Just that poster appeal from a kid, really, I think, I suppose, is what it comes down to. <laughs> Nothing rational uh, whatsoever. Poster, <laughs> poster appeal as a kid, and yeah, that's, that's about it, really. And, uh, and yeah. I think there's a pretty famous guy local to me that possibly owns one as well. Have you been stalking him? I haven't found him yet. I've not, not, <laughs> not, not seen his moustache around any corners yet. <laughs> so have you got any big plans for 2020? What's the, I mean, the market at the moment, we've had quite a tough winter, an average summer for most. Obviously there are some who've done really, really well and some have really suffered. Um, and then the year before, again, the winter was tough. So I think a lot of people are struggling. But now the numbers have reduced within the trade quite significantly yeah. and as a consequence, as long as this old political jazz sort of gets on with it and we carry on, I think we're up for a bit of an upturn really. Yeah, I mean I've, the last two years I've not really had any issues in winter time as such but then I've been doing it quite a few years now so I've built mm. up my clientele and customers and yeah, I've got a lot of regulars that you know have maintenance cleans and things in winter as well mm -hmm. and I've also got quite a big range of customers now that quite frequently buy new cars on yes. a regular basis too, which is always helpful. It is indeed. And, and again, I mean, word of mouth is perhaps the most effective way of promoting a business long term. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting is being Devon based, that's obviously rural. Taunton is, I, I, how does one politely describe, I mean, it, it's not an urban metropolis per se. No, it's a, it's a Backwater? backwater. <laughs> That's what he said, not what I said, so please don't run me over with your tractors. Um, but this is this is my point, is that a lot of people say, you know, oh, I'm in an urban area, I'm in, in the far north, or I'm in, in the southwest or something like that, and I'm, I know there simply aren't the people around. And I always counter that, because some of the nicest cars I see are hiding in some sort of little west country farm, or they're hiding in, you know, in the Pennines or something like that. Yeah, I've seen, there's, there's a McLaren locally in Taunton that he disappears off some little country B lane, B mm. road somewhere, and you haven't even got a clue where he lives. <laughs> <laughs> but you always see it, and it's always covered in mud. <laughs> and is it faster than the transit connection? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that's that's a really key point. And in terms of 2020, you're, by the sounds of things, pretty optimistic. Yeah, 2020 I, is a bit more unit development for me, so mm -hmm. we're going to carry on getting the units where it should be with a bit more lighting and heating and things like that. Um, Obviously got some tests with PVD. Yep, so we're introducing the new PVD assessment. So all current and new members have to pass a theory and a practical test that takes basically a whole day of assessment. 
um, and we're doing a day down at David Knight's, which is near you. I don't know whether you're going to be able to make that particular yeah. day. Yeah. We're still a bit like this. Um, but no, it's been an interesting development and we'll be doing lots of videos and shouting about those particular events. Um, but what's your take on it? I mean, from my point of view, it's about having something you can prove because there are many people with a thousand years of experience but are still doing it wrong. You've got people who've only got two or three years, but they're really working hard at it and really impressive. Um, and then you've got those with a thousand certificates, but that doesn't necessarily prove anything if it's a paid for certificate. Yeah. Um, so how do you do it? You prove it with a test that covers you yeah. know, all the bits no, you need. I think it's a good thing. I think it's something the industry needs. I think we all need to be put on the same level, if, yeah. you, if you like. And, TikTok and it's very much a baseline. Yeah. It's not because yeah. I mean we don't look at anything in terms of the, the detailing side. We're not checking the finesse of your dueling skills with a rotary sort of thing. It's more about the difference that separates a good amateur detailer from a professional. Yeah. Um, and there are lots of really good amateur detailers out there. I've seen their work is good. Yeah. And they always talk about going professional. He's like, you realise it's harder work than just doing your own car in summer on the occasional yeah. weekend. And it's not just about the detailing. It's about the running of a business and your exactly. finances and your cash flow and yeah, your, record your keeping, and health and safety. Yeah. You know, yeah, health and safety, risk assessments, and things like that. There's, there's a lot to it. You know, it seems like a lot, and some of it is. You know, you do it a lot. A lot of it's down to common sense as well. A lot of it's common sense, and also with your experience, it's second nature. So yeah. sometimes it's just about verbalising what you already do. It's simple things like keeping an MSDS sheet, so SDS as they're now known, is the safety data sheet for chemicals. So if you're valeting along, and say you're at somebody's home, and a child comes along, grabs a bottle from the back of the van, and squirts it in their own face because, you know, child, um, if you've got that safety data sheet, when they go to hospital, they will know what sort of actions to take yeah. uh, and it's a sensible thing and equally you've got the insurance the public liability would be involved in that yeah. case so that if then owners were slightly unhappy about their child squirting tar remover in their face um, you've got the protection to be able to do that so you're not ruined by somebody else's mistake yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's an interesting topic and it's one we'll be developing throughout the year um, but in the meantime it has been a great day with the Mercedes we're going to go to a local park and take some section shots and some of the Mercedes as well and um, we hope to uh, get those into the next magazine and we'll put them on the uh, the face of book and stuff like that soon um, but in the meantime thank you very much for your time You're welcome very thank much you. appreciated and uh, we'll catch up soon cheers <laughs>